Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Hidden Blessings, Pastor Joyce teaches that some blessings can only be received through tested obedience and faith. And I want to say to us that there are so many hidden blessings that we have not even scratched. There are blessings that are there for us, for every child of God. And it will take faith, it will take obedience, it will take an, going an extra mile to get to know the blessings that the Father has for us. Amen. And so I want to say that God is here, God is speaking to us, and God is willing to help us to access the hidden blessings. I want to look at, at a man called Abraham in the Bible. This man was blessed already from Genesis chapter 12. He was blessed. The Lord pronounced a blessing to him. But there are blessings that were hidden or there is a specific blessing that was hidden. And Abraham had to grow and to get to that faith level that was able to unlock that particular blessing for him. And so we are going to uh, we are going to search out that from scripture. I would like to read a text message from Genesis chapter 22. I'll read from verse number one to verse number eight, and then I'll skip and go to verse number 13. Would you join me in the reading of the scripture this morning? Genesis 22, verse one to verse eight and verse 13. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac. I want you to take notice of verse number two. Let me take it up again. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in, in his hand the fire and the knife. So they both, they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for, for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. Verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Praise the Lord. Amen. I looked at this scripture and I already felt blessed. I imagined how long the ram had been caught in the thicket. I imagined if Abraham did not take the step of faith and take the journey to Mount Moriah, the place where the Lord was going to, uh, to uh, where the Lord was calling him to, would he have seen the ram? I imagined how many blessings are caught up in thickets somewhere and we have not accessed them because of our level of maturing in the Lord, because of our 
our faith that is still not up to the required level for, for us to see. Of course, God has blessed us as children of God, as sons of God, but there are other blessings that the Lord has kept in store for us. And it will take a person who will leave the comfort zone and rise up and follow the voice of the Lord. One of the things that I was discovering as I was reading this scripture is that God is on the move. Amen. And sometimes we get used to God and in specific ways in which God moves. And so every time you would expect him to appear in a certain way and bless you in a certain way. But God moves. God takes another direction so that our responsibility is to follow the voice of God and search for God without getting used to how he does things and how he blesses people. And many of us have missed the kingdom blessings because we are stuck in one place. We are still waiting for a fire in a certain place. And God has moved and is speaking in a still small voice in another place. And therefore, I want to encourage us even as we start walking through the sermon that we need to follow God, that we need to hear God, that we need need to be sensitive in the spirit to know which direction the Lord is moving. We cannot afford to sit back. And I want to say that many times we sit back and we get comfortable with the blessings that we have already. I am not saying that we should not be comfortable, but we should look for more because God has released special blessings, big blessings. I wonder when we go to heaven, what we will find there. Probably the Lord had something great for you, for you to have and hold here on earth. But because of the level of growth, you never reached that place of holding your blessing and enjoying it. So my call to us is to rise up in faith and follow the voice of God. Follow the impulse of the Holy Spirit and go where the Lord wants us to go. So as I was reading this scripture, I felt very, very encouraged. And first of all, I just want to bring just a brief introduction of who Abraham was. He was a man that did not even have a son. He had a lot of wealth uh, that God had given to him. And God initially called him from a land that he was so familiar with. In fact, God told Abraham, leave your kindred, leave your country, and go to a place that I will show you. It will take a person of faith to leave the familiar ground and to go to the unfamiliar ground, but a place where the presence of the Lord is. Amen. And so Abraham leaves the place that he was familiar with and he follows the father. He follows God and he hears him. He was attentive to the voice of God. When God says stop, you stop. When he says move, you move. That means that you have to keep in step with God and you have to activate your faith. It is not possible to follow God without faith. It is not possible. It is so hard. And so Abraham is without a child and the promise has been given to him that I will make you a father of many nations. And sometimes God gives us promises. We look at him and we wonder, God, are you even serious? I'm already 75 because by the time God is calling Abraham, he was 75. And Sarah was equally old. And when they look at themselves and the abilities of man, they are not able to get a child at that particular time. But they walked with the promise of God in their minds and in their hearts. And that's why God blessed them. So God says, you will be a father of many nations. I will bless you. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. And so Abraham believed God and started walking with God. And for a hundred years, he was without a child. 
he got the child at 100 years. Yes, we are aware that at some point he got Ishmael, but that was not what God had spoken to Abraham about. God was specifically talking about Isaac, a child of both Abraham and Sarah, his wife. That is what God was talking about. And so I want to encourage us that God can come in a time that we do not expect and pronounce a blessing. It will take faith and obedience to activate and to receive and to believe that promise that God has given to us. And so it went on like that in chapter number 17 of Genesis. We find God appearing again to, to, to Abraham and giving a promise and even speaking about Sarah and saying that she shall be mother of nations. She shall be nations. Uh, I mean, she shall, she shall bring forth nations. I really loved the way God said to Abraham that you shall be a father of many nations. And you, Sarah, nations shall come from you. I really loved it that way. And that is what became of these two people. They continued to walk with God. And after waiting for many years, the child comes. The child Isaac comes. And just after a few, maybe a few years, the Lord comes again where we have taken our text from. After these things, there were so many things that happened between the time Isaac was born and the time God is testing Abraham. In chapter number 22, the Bible says God tested Abraham. And this is where I want us to come to. God tested Abraham. So I want to encourage us believers that there are many things that the Lord has in store for us. And there are so many things that the Lord has spoken about us. But whether you're a believer, whether you have believed with the whole of your heart, whether you sacrifice like how you will be tested, your faith will be tested. Abraham loved God. Abraham followed God. Abraham walked with God. Abraham was willing and ready to obey God. But his faith was tested. And our faith will be tested. I want to encourage us that the testing of our faith does not mean that God has forgotten about us. Last week I came to this church and I had pastor pray for different people with different needs. Does it mean that God hates those people? Does it mean that God has forgotten about those people? Does it mean the negative? It doesn't. It just means that our faith is under test. And when we come out of that testing, we shall see for sure the glory of God. So Abraham experiences, experiences the testing of God. He says to him, um, um, take your son, your only son, Isaac. Very specific. At this time, Abraham has two sons. And I'm imagining if God said, take your son and leaves it at that, what would Abraham do. Probably would take the other son or probably he would think about it. But God was very specific. He didn't leave the choice in the hand of Abraham. He was specific and he wanted Isaac, the son of Sarah and Abra Abraham. And so he says, this son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. God knew about the love that Abraham had for his son. And go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains. And actually this signifies Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus was the only son of the father. And the father was willing to release this son, to leave the glories of heaven and to come here on earth and save you and myself. Not because you were a good person. We were not saved because we were good. We were not saved because God needed us. We were saved because he loved us. 
He came looking for us from heaven. He left the glories of heaven and the pleasures of heaven. He, he left the kingdom of the Father and came to this earth to a people that never knew him, never wanted him. And he released the grace of salvation to each and every one of us. This is the same way Isaac, the only child of the father, and the one that was the beloved of the father, he is going to be killed uh, in Mount Moriah the way it was from the beginning. But I tell you something, that the Lord has the full story of our lives. And there is no time God has forgotten about us. We may face difficulties. For sure, I have said testing will come. But it doesn't mean that the Lord has forgotten us. What he has said, he will surely do. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, Abraham goes and carries everything. He carries the wood. He carries the servants. He carries the sun. And they begin their journey. I was so amazed in verse number three. The Bible says, so Abraham rose early in the morning. Oh my God, this challenged my faith. I have two sons, biological children and a daughter. And I imagined if God asked me, to go and offer any of them. I tell you, it is very difficult. I can't. And there are two. It's not one like the way Abraham had. I, it's not possible. It's very difficult. But Abraham never questioned God. He rose up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took his young men and his son and cut the wood and started the journey without asking questions. The Lord is asking us to activate our faith and our obedience to a level where we do not ask him questions. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he started the journey and on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. He's on his way there and then God causes him to, to, to see the place from afar and see the place where God is leading him. And then he decided the kind of faith that I want to exercise, the kind of obedience that I want to show my God doesn't require me to go with many people who are going to question what I am doing for my God. He decided that there is a decision that I need to make and I do not want to go with anyone who is going to discourage me. Probably that was the thinking of Abraham. So he leaves the servants there and takes the son and begins to go up the mountain. I see faith and obedience in the life of Abraham. So that fourth day he's going there, Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Friends, there is a place of worship. There is a level of worship where you need to go alone. There is a place of faith where consultations are not a requirement. There is a level of sacrifice where God wants you to make a decision to move alone and to go there alone and begin to worship the Lord and give him the sacrifices that he's asking from you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Abraham goes there and begins, you know, to, the son begins to talk to him. Father, I can see See, we have the fire, we have the wood, we have, but we do not have the sacrifice. I can imagine the innocence of this child. He's wondering, probably he had been exposed to the way of sacrifices and sacrificing to the Lord. And he's wondering, we've never appeared before the Lord to offer sacrifices this way, without a lamb, without a gift for the Lord. Why are we going up the mountain without the sacrifice? And God was fully aware church, we need to rise up to that level of faith where we go by God. 
and forget about anything else for as long as the, the Lord is going ahead of us, where he has called us, that is where his presence is. And when we fix our eyes on that presence, on the presence of the Lord, he will do everything else for us. Amen. And so uh, the son asks, and Abraham says in verse number eight, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And I see faith in here. I don't know whether Abraham knew about the ram, but he said, God will provide. You may not know the details of what God is going to do in your next level of life, but what is required of you is faith in him. Having this confidence and this unwavering faith that God is going ahead of, uh, ahead of you. And his presence means his presence. He is there. He is everything you need. He will provide for you everything that you need. And God does not ask us for anything that we do not have. He knew and he had kept the ram there. For Abraham, he was testing him. In the beginning of, uh, of chapter number 22, the Bible says that God tested Abraham. So God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And both of them went together. It is a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice that the Lord is asking for. And I just want to challenge us that even our lives, it is not so much about material things. It is about your life and my life. We are supposed to live a life of a sacrifice. Our lives are supposed to be sacrificed to the Lord. We are supposed to deny ourselves some of the pleasures of this life and give it to God. Give our lives to God because he knows, uh, he knows what he's doing with our lives and with him there is no loss. We may think and feel that we have given so much to the Lord, but there's nothing that we can give to God that we didn't receive from him. Your life comes from God. Everything that you have comes from God. He's the source of everything that we are. He's the source of everything that we have. And when he asks for it, it's because he knows what to do. He knows how to replenish you. So let us not look at the possessions that we have. Let us fix our, our eyes on God because he is able to do everything for us. Amen. So the Bible continues to teach us and to talk about sacrifices. I'm just looking at this, at, at Abraham and this young child. And probably Abraham is just thinking in his head, this son that I have waited for, for many years. How can I, how can God be, you know, how can God ask for him? But I tell you, with the Lord, there is no loss. Praise the Lord. I remember a scripture in the book of John chapter 11 when, when Lazarus died and Jesus, before he died, when Jesus got the news and Martha and Mary were, were calling him to come and heal the brother, Jesus' first word was, this sickness is not unto death. And I tell you, the first words that the Lord has spoken about us is the living word of God. God doesn't turn against his word. He is the resurrection and the life. Even if Lazarus dies, he knows how to bring him back to life. And I want to encourage somebody that it doesn't matter as much as it matters what you have lost in this walk of faith, the Lord is the resurrection and the life. If he comes when a situation is dead in your life, he shall resurrect it. If he comes and appears before you when you're just about to offer whatever it is that he's asking, he shall come and bring an, a, 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 an alternative 
And he's going to give you the right thing that you need to offer to him. Indeed, for sure, our God is a good God, and he does not play injustice on us. The Bible calls us even to a place of offering our bodies as living sacrifices to God. And I tell you, when we talk about sacrifice, it's not just a contribution. A story is told in Africa, I don't know whether it, it has come to, to this place, that two men were walking along the street uh, I mean, two, two, two animals were walking along the street. There was a pig and there was a chicken. And as they walked, they found um, on their way a restaurant. And so the chicken talked to the pig and said, why can't we go and give our services to that restaurant? And the pig looked at the hen and said, you know, for you, it's going to be a contribution and you will have your life and continue because it was going to just give eggs because the restaurant had been written, like when you look at the menu, there were eggs, and then of course there was pork and all that. But you see, the hen will lay the, 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 the egg there and go its way. But for the pig, it will be sacrificed. It will be killed, it cannot come again. And so the pig was not happy about this decision. And I want to tell you that this, the life of a Christian is about sacrifice and not contribution. We cannot give God a part of us and leave the other part for ourselves. He is calling us to sacrifice our bodies. He is calling us to a place of denying ourselves and taking on the things of the kingdom. He's calling us to a place of crushing so that we are crushed and we are, we are made into the image of God. He says in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, offer your body as a living sacrifice. I read that and sometimes I ask myself, am I a living sacrifice to the Lord, holy and acceptable? to God, for this is your spiritual worship. God is calling us to a place of worship where we deny ourselves and we give ourselves as sacrifices and not contribution. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, that I beat my body and make it my slave. How many times as Joyce have I made that choice to beat my body. This body that we carry, I don't know about you here, but in my place and in many people that I have encountered, this body has been asking for too much. It, it asks for everything. It wants pleasure here. It wants this kind of wisdom, this kind of knowledge. And let me tell us, brethren, if we do not sacrifice this body and beat it, we will fall out of the will of God. If we have made a decision to become children of God, to become the saved ones of God, the chosen generation that God has talked about, then we have to beat our bodies. Deny this body some pleasures. Tell it. The flesh has to come under the spirit. Let your spirit man live. And let the physical man be subject to the spirit man. And by so doing, we are going to please our father. God is calling for obedience. That's th the third thing I'm talking about. Remember that when I started, I said that your faith will be tested. Secondly, you have to offer a sacrifice, your body as a sacrifice, your time as a sacrifice. Sometimes we need to go to the mission field. I don't know how you do it here, but in Kenya, we have so many people that need to hear the gospel. And many times we sacrifice our pleasures, we sacrifice our resources, our time, and we go to them and preach to them. And especially, I think right now, what is needed in our country is discipleship. It is very easy to find the lost because many people are doing that. But how easy is it for us, the body of believers, to ground the found? Because they need 
to be grounded in the word of God. They need to be established in the word of God. When I was doing uh, some course in missions, I remember one of my professors telling us that, you know, when, when you go out for evangelistic missions and you don't have a plan for discipleship, it's like going to the hospital, getting a baby, and leaving the baby in the hospital. So then it leaves a pl that, that baby in a place where they either have to shiver, shiver, and maybe die of hunger. Then nobody is taking care of them unless they get a, a, a good Samaritan to take care of them. Many of our babies in the mission field have died there. There is a call to discipleship. And we need to ground people in the place of uh, discipleship. So God is asking number three for obedience. After we have done all that we have done and given ourselves to him, he's asking if we can obey him. When the Lord is speaking to your heart in the secret time, in the, in the quiet time that you have with him, do you obey him? Do I obey him? The Lord is asking us to obey him. He's calling us to the place of obedience. As for Abraham, he obeyed and never asked questions. He rose up, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men and began the journey without questioning. This is the place we need to go. Faith in our God leads to obedience. I want to remind us that our biggest desire is that we may have God at all times, not things at all times. Because many times it's, you don't want to lose, you don't want to lose what you have, but I want to encourage us to have God at all times. If we hold on to our treasures, we are going to lose God. If God is asking for your donkey, like he did in the New Testament, a person had kept their, their donkey somewhere for their own use, and Jesus went there and asked for it so that he can use it to ride to a place. And God is asking for us to give that which we have kept for his own use. And let me tell you, we are not at a loss. We don't lose anything by giving it to the Lord. As it were, the Lord multiplies us back. Even your life that you're sacrificing and going to places to make sure that the gospel is heard, you will get it back. You will get your life back. You will get your time back because God is not a robber of any person. Let's not hold on to treasures. Let us hold on to God. Our bodies, therefore, are temples of the Holy Spirit. He's asking us to rise up to a place of obedience and know for sure that this body that you're carrying is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to obey him. We need to give it to him so that he can dwell in our lives. God is asking that you surrender yourself to him. He is asking that you offer yourself to him. He is asking if you can rise up, saddle your donkey and go to the place he's asking you to go. And that is a place of obedience. And finally, I want to talk about testing from God, solution from God. If God is the one testing you, like he did for Abraham, when he asked that go and sacrifice and offer your son as a sacrifice before me, he knew that the solution comes from him. Is there any testing that you could be going through? The solution is from God. Many times we don't give ourselves solutions because we do not know where God is going with what he's doing to us. And one thing that I have learned about God, when he wants to use us, when he's doing something through us, he doesn't give us the full picture of where we are going. I'm looking at the Israelites. When God sent Moses to deliver them from the hands of the Egyptians, he never gave them the full picture that when you leave, Pharaoh and his chariots will follow you. And then when you get to the Red Sea, he will catch up with you. And then I will divide the Red Sea. He didn't give those details. He told them, wake up and go and offer for me sacrifices. 
Go and worship me in the land where I'm taking you. And they encountered all these other details along the way. But I want to encourage us and say to us, if God is the one who has called us, he has solution for everything that we need. If he has called you, he will provide for you. Everything else for Abraham was available. The wood was there. The, the fire was there. But that one thing was lacking, and that was the sacrifice. But God knew where the sacrifice will come from. God is not looking for what is, 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 is available everywhere. Let me tell you, God is not just looking for what is readily available. He's looking for somebody who will deny themselves and get out of the ordinary and go to the place of the extraordinary. And begin to see the move of God. He's looking for just one life that will go to the altar, be burned for the sake of the kingdom, a sacrifice that will look at God as all that we need and have. That is what God is asking for. Abraham answered and said, the Lord will provide the sacrifice. If he is the one testing you, he is the one giving you solution. Do not worry where he's taking you. Let me tell you something. Even when I was coming here, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know where I was going. I had an idea of the school and everything. But because the Lord had spoken, I knew that the solution was going to come from him. As I was coming, he delivered this message for me. I was scared about everything. I, I didn't know how to go about it. And he spoke to me through the life of Abraham. I called Abraham and I told him to leave the place of familiarity. I left Nairobi, Kenya. I am very familiar with Nairobi, Kenya. I'm familiar with my church. But the Lord called me to come here, a place where he was going to show me. And he had already prepared a people. I am so grateful to God that I found a family here. I found a church here. I found love because if he's the one calling you, he has the solution for you. And so this is what happened to Abraham. He left without knowing. He left without a sacrifice. But God had a sacrifice ahead of him. He showed him a ram that was caught in the thicket. I want to ask you, as a way of applying this word, I want to ask you, how many rams are caught in the thicket and they are still there? Because we have refused to obey God. We have refused to take a risk and follow the voice of God. Maybe God is calling you even to Africa. And you're saying, I have no idea where that Africa is. I have no idea. We were in school with one of the, one of the brothers there, and he was asking me, so I, I feel that the Lord is calling me to come to Africa. How do I come? Must I carry food and water? Because we are told there's a lot of, uh, the water there is bad. There are so many diseases. I told him, if the Lord is calling you to Africa, do not worry too much about diseases. He's a healer. He's a restorer. He's the one calling you. So are we going to fear diseases and fail to be in the place? Let me tell you, if there's something I want for my life, is being in the place where the Lord wants me. Not the place I want to be at. I want to be in the place that the Lord wants me to be. So God calls Abraham and when he's about to, to, to slaughter the son, the, Lord, the, the, the angel of the Lord speaks to Abraham and tells him, do not hurt your child. Do not hurt him. I say, hallelujah. Do not hurt your child. And Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a ram caught in the thicket. There is a place your blessing has been tied for many years. It will take faith for you to see it. 
It will take faith. It will take that sacrifice of you getting there that God is going to expose that thing and make your eyes, open your eyes to see it. It is not seen by everybody. I wonder if around Moriah, the people who were there had seen the ram. They would have taken it. It was kept there for, faith, for, for Abraham and it took faith for him to see it. There are things in the spirit that we will never see unless we obey God, unless we have faith in him. Those who will walk by faith and not by sight will see the blessings of the Lord in hidden places. Make sure that you see your ram. Make sure you see your blessing. It is hidden somewhere, but it will take a step of faith to go there. As I conclude this message this morning, I want to say that God will not give his treasure to a vessel that has not been tested. I know that it happens in your country, but I know too well about my country. You will not be given like a driver's license unless you have been tested. Because otherwise, you will kill people and also kill yourself on the road. So you will have to go with somebody watching how you read the signs and looking at how you, you use the roads and how you view people even as they cross the road. And then when they are satisfied, they will give you the license to drive the car. God is careful about his creation. God is careful about his people. God is careful about his blessings. He will not give it to us unless he has tested us. We have to pass the test. Yes, he has promised to us that we will, we will be blessed. Yes, he has said through us the nations will hear the gospel. Yes, he has said that he's sending us to those places, but it will take faith and obedience to unlock the blessings of God. We need to get to that place of promise and we will get there by faith and by obedience. God will not allow us to do that until we are ready to handle the blessing. Abraham's promise was so huge. Um, I, I was just looking at it, Genesis chapter 12, that I will, in blessings, I will bless you. All the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. And whatever curses you, I will curse. And I'm looking at this wonderful blessing. Do you think it would be given to a careless person who is not tested? Because between that blessing and where we are and how uh, at the point where Abraham realized the blessings of God, it took time, it took preparation, it took testing, it took obedience. So the blessings have been pronounced to us, but faith will take us there. There is a ram in the thicket, but it will only be seen by those whose faith has been tested. I want to encourage us. I want to say to us that there is a blessing even in the world out there. God wants to bless people. God wants to introduce his son to many people who are out there. But it will take us who have been faithful, who have been tested, who have been obedient to deliver those people. So I want to encourage us and I want to say to us that we can rise up Amen. and get to the place where God is asking us to go. I want to encourage us that it may look difficult, it may look blood, we don't see properly. But I tell you, if the Lord is there, he's your light. He's everything you need. He's everything that you're looking for. He will hold your hand and take you there. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you and minister to you. May the Lord even expose more than what I was able to deliver to you. May the Lord remind you what we have said. May the Lord help you to see the depth of obedience, faith, and sacrifice 
even as we get to the place where he's calling us to. Yes, indeed, our faith will be tested. It is not a sign of denial. It is a sign of trust. Uh, uh, there's a man in the Bible called Job. He was tested and God restored to him everything that he had lost. And God is going to see us through. Amen. I just want us to believe together as I say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We worship you. There is none who is like unto you. You alone are God. You alone are exalted. You alone is our God and our King. We thank you, Father, for your presence in our lives. You have loved us with an everlasting love. You have called us into the kingdom as your children, oh God, as your sons, my Father. And we are here to, uh, to, to just give praise and honor to you your name. You found us when we were lost, oh God, and you gave your only begotten son to purchase us and to redeem us from the depths of sin, from the depths of curses. You brought us to a place of blessings, and we are here gathered to give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for the word that you have chosen to bless us with this morning. We pray that this word will find root in our spirit, in our soul, and help us, my Father, to grow in faith and in obedience. Jehovah God, we know that in this life of salvation, we face many trials, temptations, we face many problems. Indeed, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you, our God, delivers us from them all. And Jehovah God, I pray that we shall see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. So help us to build ourselves in in love for you, in faith, O oh God, in obedience, O oh Father, even as we march forth and go to that place where you're calling us, O oh God. Help our understanding, help our faith, help our eyes of faith, even to see that which you have in store for us, O oh God. And help us to rise, O oh God, without questioning and follow your will, your purpose, your presence, and everything that you have in store for us. And Jehovah God, I pray that you bless this church. I pray that my Father and my God, all the hidden blessings for them as a church, for them as individuals, Lord, you shall cause them to rise in faith and be able to see them, oh God, and operate in that level that you're calling them to operate in, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving me the opportunity to worship together with the saints in this church, oh God. I pray that, Lord, your name and your purposes, Lord, Lord, will be fulfilled in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us, go with us, and be with us until, Lord, you bring us together to celebrate your goodness, your glory, and your faithfulness in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for everyone who is here probably going through trials, temptations, sicknesses, diseases, lack. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you shall touch each one of them and minister to them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there are some, my God, that you could be calling to the mission field. I pray that they will give themselves as sacrifices before you, O oh God, and trust you that you will take them there, my Father, and provide for them, O oh God, and that, Lord, you will come at the very hour when they need you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes, O oh God. Open our, our, our eyes, my God, to see you, O oh God, and to function in faith in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We love you. For this we are praying through our Lord and our Savior, even Jesus Christ. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. 
All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.